So you have uh, a motion on to disqualify Judge Ritchie. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. Tell me, tell me what's going on. My son has been suffering abuse. Um, I took care of my son for nine years solely. The father was not involved at all until child support caught up with him. He's an engineer, marine engineer in California. Uh, as soon as I lost the attorney that I had, which was Michael Balabon, they relitigated everything. My son has special needs as well. Um, How old is your son? He's almost 11. And now I've had problem, the judge, the last, here on the hearing on 226 that I've had a day to prepare for, I was kept in the courtroom until my son was brought to the courthouse, the self-help here by my friend who was babysitting him. And the judge wouldn't let me out of the room until my son was brought here. Again, my son did not want to go with his dad. When my son was brought to me for visiting on President's Day weekend, he was having an asthma attack. I take him into the doctors after the first two days because I used his nebulizer, his asthma inhaler, and I tried to get it to subside. It wasn't working, so I took him into the hospital and he was prescribed a, a steroid and another medication for his congestion. Um, the father, he has taken him off all medications, which is for ADHD. He has been on since he's three years old. He has taken him off his uh, sleep medication that he has taken every day since three years old up until recently, and now my son's up all hours of the night. The judge had to be like walking downstairs when my son got here. My son was in tears. The attorney for my son's dad, we were never married. They both went downstairs and was harassing my friend that brought my son here, scaring her, saying we could get her for kidnapping too. And they had no concern for my son. My son, the custody change should have never happened. They relitigated the, the special needs. There was issues, and I was in the middle of a third due process hearing, which I finally got him out of the seriously emotionally disturbed and into the seriously learning disabled, where he was placed after the custody was changed. All this has been ignored. The judge has ignored everything. I've asked him to let my son see a mediator. He denied it with me, but this time, he put in for the judge to see a mediator in an evidentiary hearing this mediator took my son in early, and there was an altercation now, and it was involving a guy named Dennis, Dennis Murren at the family courts at, at the Pecos and Bonanza. What happened was I gave my son a hug, and I, was, we, I went to the, to the meeting for child interview. They were already done. I got there at like 4, 2, 4, 3. Well, I didn't ask the questions. The dad started reading on me. And, he was really loud, made it uncomfortable. He said, so what are you doing here? You got an appointment? And I, I said, well, same thing you're doing here. He said, OK, well, we're getting ready to leave. I said, OK, you know, my son's seen me, gave me a big hug, everything was good. And I brought his Xbox with me because his Xbox, he travels with that Xbox, OK, always. So we walked outside, and as we're walking outside, my son quietly asked me, when do I, am I going home with you? When do I get to come back? It's, when do I come back? I said, in a couple weeks, which is for spring break. And the dad said, oh, well, I don't know about that. You know, I don't want him to get in this. I said, you know, stop. Don't, stop. Don't do this right now for him. And as we go out to the parking lot, and I had my son a cell phone. This is the fourth cell phone. I'm not, I've got no, he's cut off all communication with my son. And I wasn't, I was trying to get this put on a USB stick to turn in here. I don't know how to do all this stuff. I. My son set up a um, um, PS4 app on my phone and made us friends so we could communicate because we know that the dad's not going to let us have any phone contact. This is, my son's had problems in school. He's getting in fights. The father punches stuff. He slaps him in the face. I mean, it's been horrific, horrific 
for my son. Um, when I handed him his Xbox, I handed it to the dad. I, was, I gave him the phone, and then the dad, he started yelling at me. You're not even supposed to be around him. Get away from him. Now, you leave. And I, me and my son are kind of like in shock, wondering what's going on. His sister, I see his sister leave the truck. The next thing I know, his sister comes back. I look over at the doors because she's looking that way. There's three guys coming out towards me. And it was the Dennis Corona, because I spoke with his supervisor right after this happened. He came right up to me an inch to my face and said, back up. I looked at him, I didn't, he told me, I said, get in the car and leave. And I yelled at him. And, and me and my son are both just, you know, so scared. It was like, he approached me like he was going to harm me. I mean, it, it almost scared me. I don't get scared so easy. But the way he approached me was like he was going to, I don't, there was no reason to do what he did to me. And that's, I see my son leave, and as soon as my son left, I tur he turned around and walked away. The other two guys were standing way back. And I see them looking at each other like, wow, you know, at least see that something's not right here. I, I, I don't know what his sister said in there to people, but obviously they said something wrong. It, this has been an ongoing situation. The judge has done ex parte hearings. I had cops at my door trying to force, they did force my son out twice. Twice. My son stood his ground. He did not want to go. He was afraid. The uncle, who has done 16 years in prison, okay, 16 years. He held my son up by his ankle upside down and hit him with something. And he told the cop that came to interview him that his dad don't care. His dad works 40 hours plus. Thank you. It's been half of my son. The judge has ignored it all. Um, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> what I've been through is nothing compared to what my kids have been through. So, I have a couple of issues here today. Okay. The first is, um, I understand that you don't agree with how Judge Ritchie has handled this, but in order for me to disqualify a judge, there has to be some showing that there's a bias or prejudice that... Yeah, if there was a bias. So uh, there has to be that. I also don't see, did, did you send a copy of this to Judge Ritchie? Because I don't yes. see any kind of service in here. I filed it. I don't see that. And he did a hearing um, on the 21st. I see. Yeah, so yeah, I did serve him with everything. Um,
So, Camille, do you have a, so let, let's just talk about that a little bit, okay, because what, I, I have to have some, there has to be some bias or prejudice, which I'm just not, he I understand that you disagree with. When he made my son leave with the dad, right. he didn't care about his medications that he was, he was supposed to take for 10 days. And he sanctioned me. He sanctioned me for the previous time from when the uncle hung him upside down and he, my son did not want to go. I mean, my son's almost my size. The cops expected me to drag him out the door. I mean, that's not right at all. You know, and my son, he... When it comes to abuse, I'm very big on abuse. My son, he's not making it up. He's not, the dad's very brutal. He doesn't believe in none of his disabilities, the taking off medication. The judge kept me in the courtroom until my son got here, and he forced him to leave with the dad. All right. Yeah. I, I, right. Uh, and I, under, I understand your frustration, ma'am. I, I yeah. think one of the things that I see that's happened here is I understand you as a mom, you have concerns yeah. about your kid. Well, because when you don't follow the court orders, it just makes things worse for, for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is, it's looked like what has happened here, and, and I... To a point, yeah, I mean, I did it for the right reasons. I've made all the wrong things. Right, I know you, I, I can tell from talking to you, you have the very best of intentions, but you know, the judge, the family court judges have to balance out the rights of both of the parents. Um, he doesn't care about my rights at all. He doesn't well, care that I can't talk to my son. But, but part of, so part of the reason that things are where they are right now mm -hmm. is because, and I understand why, but it looks like you haven't been cooperating with the court orders. Okay. So, it, it, makes things really difficult. <laughs> you know, I have two so, kids and so two different to, times. for things to move forward, because the judge also has an obligation to try to preserve a relationship with dad. Um, I know you're not a big fan of dad and you have some concerns. Well, I've always had just hopes that he would be, you know, everything that my son wants. Right. What am I supposed to do with my son when he doesn't want to go? How am I supposed to? I know, well, you know, a lot of times kids don't want to do things. Well, when they're getting abused, I mean, that's when that's the situation. And right, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You document your concerns, make sure that you give your son tools to manage, you know, what he needs to. But well, he did, I, he came here, he was, you know. I, um, I, I would really encourage you to follow the court orders because by not following them, it just it makes the situation just worse for for everybody, um, your son included, honestly. Yeah, I see, I've had trouble understanding that because, like I said, I've had actually I have a 26 year old as well, <laughs> and back in that time, the actions that I took wouldn't have been unacceptable, you know. To my knowledge, I mean, because I had to go through court with my daughter as well against the dad. And I don't know if it's the difference in times, because when you have a kid in 1992 and then you have one in 2008, times have changed. It's, it's very different now because there's a presumption that both parents have you know, equal time with kids. I think back in 1992, there was still some presumption that mom was mom, yeah. and, um, and I, I do think that things are a little different now in terms of the law, it's changed, yeah. it's changed. Yeah, it, that's what I'm seeing, I mean, because I just did what I know, you know, that's, and yeah, it's been bad since then, um, but the judge relitigating my son's issues, that's where the wrong happened, that's where it went bad, because that shouldn't happen. It went from, I mean,
the order from 3-9-2016. And it's known that this that my son's dad has done, I had a kid restraining order on him before when my son was younger, backhanded him in the stomach, and all this was documented. Um, to my knowledge, that shouldn't, that should have been looked at, and it should have never been handed over to him like that. I mean, especially when I didn't do anything wrong, and he relitigated the, all the school issues, my disability. He already knew that I had spinal surgery. That doesn't make me unable to take care of my child. I got better. I got better. So, I mean. I know, maybe it sounds like an awful lot. So, I don't see anything here that shows, just on its face, that shows the kind of bias or prejudice that I can disqualify a judge for. I would encourage you to follow through with the legal process. And if you disagree with the decision, you know, the, the remedy for that is to appeal it. I've been going through that for two years. <laughs> What about not being able to talk to my son? He's not allowed to call me or nothing. Um, I, he, take, he took away my legal right, the judge did. I can't even get his school, I can't even properly fight this evidentiary hearing coming up. I can't get no information from the schools. He, they won't speak to me. The judge said that he didn't take away my legal rights and he did. I have the, the order. This is making it impossible for me. Okay, so it's a temporary order. You have a hearing in a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. So I would just focus on getting ready for that. And Can I get an attorney by any um, chance? I have no means. He has a paid. Talk to, you need to talk to legal aid about that. I've applied three times and they denied me. And it's not that I don't qualify. It's just they only have enough attorneys to go around. And I just look at the draw three times. Well, keep asking, right? No, they told me if I ask again, they will not consider nothing unless the circumstances have drastically changed. I have been... Well, have you asked since this happened? Because that's a pretty drastic change of circumstances. Yeah, yeah, they they just sick of hearing from me, I guess. All right, ma'am. Well, um, I don't really know what else to tell you. I'm sorry that you're going through this, and I wish you the best of luck. Okay. Yeah. Thank right. you. If, if, all right, thank you.